spawn a plane or a helicopter that will patrol an area with RYD planes patrol script. Here we are on a mission I built. It's just a player on a mountain surrounded by some enemies. And I have a release thread I put together for the script that I'm going to share with you today. So let's go to the scenario tab at the top and then down to open scenario folder. We are going to download the script and install it. Here we are on Bohemia Interactive Forums. And this is the release thread for RYD Planes Patrol script. Now if you scroll down, here's some information about the script, some of the features. You can download the script or you can manually set it up. You can set it up externally. Here is the usage for the editor setup the execution for different codes, trigger activation, and then of course the defines of what the main codes that basically call the planes or helicopters to spawn and patrol. So if we go to the top, let's first download the script. You're going to go to where it says download here and click on this link which is from my Google Drive. At the top you're going to go to this arrow here where it says download. You just click on that, give it a few seconds, and a browse option to save the script will appear. So I'm going to put it into the mission folder here and just save it. And once it's downloaded, you could close this. So here we are in the mission folder, and this is the zip file that I downloaded. Once you get the zip file, you just open it up and you take these two files right here, just drag them into your mission folder. Let's go over these two scripts. The first script, the init.sqf. This basically has one line of code. This will call the script into function once your mission starts. So if you already have an IIT.sqf, just take this code and add it to it. Now for the main script itself, let's open up RYD planes patrol. Now this script isn't limited to just planes itself. You can spawn helicopters provided you just put the class name for those helicopters into the script. Now starting at the top, RYD Planes Patrol Limit, this three means you can call the script three times. If you set it to one, you can only spawn a plane or a helicopter one time. They will patrol and that's it. So if you want a number of times, then just raise this number. We're just going to set it to five. What we want to do is we want to scroll to the very bottom and just look at this bold section here from here on down. This is what's going to be important. So here's a code. If you didn't notice, we're going to expand this. After the code is a comment. It's basically a description. This here describes what this, what this string is for. I have this on the release thread, the bottom of the release thread. The above code defines are the following. So this is the code that we're looking at in the script. These are the defines for each of these codes. So the spawn position is the plane spawn. This is basically where the plane is going to spawn at. Then here, the second define is the class name of the plane or helicopter that is going to fly. Right now it's set to vanilla Arma 3 A10. Here is the number of planes that can patrol it's currently set to three so that means three planes will spawn at once and fly around in in this script here you could change this to one if you only want one so let's set that to one the patrol marker which is this which is this part right here support area that's going to be the patrol marker where the plane when it spawns at plane spawn it will fly around this marker area called support area. The next one, which is 60, is the time of support. This is basically 60 seconds. 60 seconds is not a very long time for a plane to fly around, which is only one minute. So if you wanted to fly, have them fly around for like say five minutes, then you'd set this to 300. I'm gonna set it to 120 two minutes so what we need to do is we need to go back into the mission and we need to set up the plane spawn marker to where the plane is going to spawn at and then the marker where the plane will patrol let's save the script and let's go back into the editor and set those markers up all right let's go to f6 markers and we're going to go to the map and we're going to have the plane spawn at the airfield so we're just going to basically go over here and we're just going to choose a start marker. 
like right here. We're going to face the icon that way because when the plane spawns, that's going to be the direction that they're going to they're facing. Once you place your marker, just edit the marker and go to the variable name. And remember the, the name, the variable name is plane spawn. So I copied it from the script and we're going to paste it there. So plane spawn, it's very simple, plane spawn. Once you have that, then just hit OK. Go back to where the player is at and we're going to place an area marker. So we're going to choose this up here. We're going to choose our Eclipse. We're going to put the marker in the center and then we're going to go to the area widget. And we're going to expand this marker so that it encompasses this entire area. Because, I mean, we're talking about a plane flying around here. So, so there's a number of things that you could do with this script for patrols. You could set it up for, like, an ambient patrol just to give your mission some ambience, like a plane or a helicopter just flying around or whatever. You could use any plane any helicopter, or you can call for air support. We're gonna edit the marker. So the variable name for this marker is going to be support area, just like that. You can get that from the script itself, or you just type it in as it is. I'm sure you guys don't want some big ass marker in your mission where you're gonna see them, see them on the map. So what you could do is go to the entities panel right here and click on both, right click one of them, go to attributes, and go down to where it says marker style and then alpha. And what this is is the transparency for those markers. So literally you could just go down, set it to zero like that, just hit okay. And now the markers aren't there. They're still there here. When you click on them, I click on the markers and they're there, but they're, they won't be there in the mission. What we need now is to be able to call the the planes to come. So what we need is a trigger. So we're going to set up a trigger. We're going to go to F3 triggers, and we're going to set up a trigger with a size. We're going to set up an area trigger. I'm going to place it right here. I'm gonna just going to have it within this little fenced-in area, and we're going to resize it. We're going to edit the trigger, and we're going to set the activation to blue for present. And we're going to set it to repeatable and then in the on activation box uh, we're going to put a code so let's go back to the script a second and i'm going to show you this code that we could put in there all right back in the mission folder and looking at the script and you're going to go to this line right here and basically just highlight this code all the way till you reach the semicolon at the end and you're just going to copy that and we're going to go back into the mission and we're going to put that into the on activation box of the trigger. Now, if you're not sure, you could always refer to the release thread here. And this is where I have it. I have the same code here. You could always just copy this code and do the same thing. All right, back in the mission, let's edit the trigger. And in the on activation box, press Control V to paste the code. And for those that have watched my videos for codes and scripts and stuff, you know, for stuff like this, I, I like to add a hint. So we're going to type in a hint and we're going to put quotes and type a plane has spawned. The only purpose for this is just to give feedback, just to let me know that the trigger has been triggered. So if you want to do that, you can do that. It's not required. So once you have the code in the box, just hit OK. And let's save our mission and let's test it out. And if we go to the map, you won't see the markers at all that we placed. So all we do now is just walk through the trigger. You'll see that a plane has spawned in the top right there. So if we go to spectator, you could see that there's an, another name here.
Alright, you can see the message at the top end of support for left. That means that the plane's time is up because we only set it for 120 seconds. So he's going to fly back to where he spawned at and he'll delete. You can see him over there. Yeah, you can see him flying towards where he spawned at. It's kind of a trip for him. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys another way to do this. All right, another option for this is to actually make this into a radio trigger. So you can go to Activation and then set this to Radio Alpha. In the text box of the radio itself, you can put Plane Spawn if you wanted support, and you could just leave everything as it is. And let's try that. So let's save it. Let's go. All right, so this one we don't even walk into the trigger. What you do is you just press zero on your keyboard, go down to where it says radio, and then you'll see plane spawn there because that's what you defined in the trigger. And it just hit enter. Of course, we'll get our hint as we set up. And if we go to spectator again, we're going to have the plane that will spawn. All right, let's go back to the editor. I'm going to show you another way to do this. Now, let's go to the script itself, and I want to show you a code where you could set this up as an add action. For the add action, you won't need the trigger, so we'll just delete the trigger. Let's go back to the script. All right, back in the script. Here, as you can see, it says player add action. If you wanted an add action in the player's action menu, just delete these comments out. I actually have this in the release thread above here, add action player control, and I point this out here. If you want the add action in your player's action menu, then just remove the codes like, like we just did here, and of course save it. And then if you don't want the add action, then just leave them there. So basically that's all you have to do. All right, let's play it. Right, so now, if you scroll your action menu, you'll see it says call aerial support. And you're not going to get anything on the screen, but if we go to spectator, you'll know that something's coming. Because if we click on that, you can see the plane right here. Alright, I want to show you guys one more thing. Alright, so this other thing I'm going to show you is let's swap this plane out for a helicopter. So let's go back into the mission and acquire the class name for the helicopter. All you need to do for this is just go to the helicopters. And it doesn't matter which helicopter you use. You could use vanilla helicopter, modded helicopter, doesn't matter. All you need is a class name. So we're going to choose an AH Blackfoot, and we're just going to place him right here. What you want to do is when you have your asset placed, just right click it, go down towards his log, and then log classes to clipboard. Click on that. Once the menu disappears, delete the helicopter, of course, and then let's go back to the script and add the class name. All right, so back in the script. Now what you're going to do here is you're just going to highlight this, press Control V, and now this changes the class name to a helicopter class name. So you just hit save, and let's go on the mission and check it out. All right, back in the mission, let's play it. Let's use action menu, add action, and a helicopter should have spawned, so let's go to spectator, and here we are. <laughs>
helicopter is flying back. Destroyed a whole mess of targets though. Alright guys, hope you liked that. I will link this release thread in the description of the video. That way you can access it and use it as your reference and download the script. And I want to thank you guys for watching. For more codes and scripts, take a look at this playlist. Oh,